there is one thing that I love to spend money on, it is tools. And this week, I spent a few dollars. I added three DeWalt cordless tools to my collection, but today I'm gonna to talk about one of them a little more in depth. We are Alex and Elena, a couple in our mid-20s working towards financial independence and self-sustainability. Follow our journey as we grow, build, fix, and learn the skills we need to get us there. So the three tools I got were the cordless grease gun, the cordless slash corded vacuum, and then finally the pole saw. The pole saw is what I'm going to do some reviewing on today. I have some trees to trim, so it's a perfect day for it. I kind of lucked out on these three tools. My former colleague now works at DeWalt and he gets the tools at cost, so he was kind enough to use his discount to order them for me. I paid a little bit under $300 for all three of these tools. I think the grease gun alone at Home Depot retails for like $230. So DeWalt marks the heck out of these things up when they sell them in the big box stores. Here's my favorite bar and chain oil. Comes with this handy sleeve that's got your tightening wrench on it. Here's the eight inch bar and chain. It's got a little lever here for uh, for getting some more leverage when you're sawing. Let's give it a shot. One thing I like is that the motor is actually right up on the head of the saw, so keeps everything kind of compact up there and, and gives the saw some weight where you're actually cutting. It's pretty quiet too, what it sounds like unloaded. This was not my brightest moment. Another cool feature I found is that if you run the saw backwards, it will actually heal a branch back onto a tree. Now that I've gotten quite a few cuts under my belt with this thing, I can give a little bit more accurate review on it. I like it. I like how they've put this angle here in the bar relative to the pole. It just helps with grabbing on the trees. I found this isn't so much of a leverage device as more of just it keeps the saw from, from bucking forward when the chain engages with the log. I uh, just kind of helps you help support it there. I did find some branches that I will need to add the extension for, so I'm going to try that out here shortly. But honestly, for most tree trimming needs, just the regular grip is all you need. One thing to keep an eye on is you'll be tempted to use this as kind of a handle, and this is the rotational lock that locks the two halves together. It comes apart. Um, so just be careful you're not unscrewing that. I had to tighten that a little bit during use. And then one other thing I wanted to comment on is the trigger. This is something that I saw other people complain about. It's got like a two part safety where you have to push this back and then depress this, and then you can depress the trigger. Um, this is a little bit cumbersome. You'll find when you're using it, you kind of develop a technique where before you start cutting, you always slide your hand down like this to automatically depress it. It's kind of awkward and I guess you can get used to it, but I will probably end up driving out the little pin that's in here that holds this lever in. And that way it's just a single, you depress this thing down and uh, there's no extra step to, to get that little lock unlocked before you hit the trigger. Otherwise, I'm using the five amp hour battery here. I still have two bars left and I've done quite a bit of cutting around the perimeter of the property here. So I am pretty impressed with uh, just how well the battery life holds up. I guess it's not really related to the saw too much, but I like those five amp hour batteries. So I guess I'm gonna get the extension on here and we'll see how it cuts with the full 15 foot of reach. 
Here's the three parts of the saw laid out. It's pretty nice that you can break it down for storage. Pretty self-explanatory. There's arrow there, match it up with the arrow there. And there's electrical contacts in there that will line up and transmit power from the handle and the battery. Wow, this is a heck of an extension. It definitely puts a huge lever arm on this thing to be able to lift it up. Wow. I guess uh, once you have it up in the trees, you can kind of rest it on a branch, but definitely wouldn't want to do long-term operation with this extra extension in. It's pretty heavy. Okay, my original thought was correct. It's a lot easier to handle when it's just vertically up in the tree just because that that force is directly over top of your support rather than being out um, sideways, creating a moment arm at your handle. Um, but it does well, I think, for the most part, you won't need the extension, but it's really nice to have for the branches that you absolutely do need it. That's really all I have to say about this tool. It does what it's advertised to do. It makes trimming trees a ton easier. I came from a manual pole saw and a manual pole lopper, and this is like three times easier than doing that. You can get branches that are so much bigger and so much less time and effort. So if you're on the DeWalt battery system and you have a property with enough trees to justify a dedicated pole saw, I would absolutely go for it. The only suggestion I might make, which is definitely against DeWalt's recommendations, is to drive out that little pin on the safety lever and eliminate the secondary safety just to make your life a little bit easier, especially if you're working with a gloved hand. But otherwise, that's it. Thanks a ton for watching. Now I'm gonna go pick up all these branches that I just cut down. Subscribe to Mason Dixon Acres. You'll get a video every Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Like and leave a comment below if you have anything to say about the video. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.